Hi everyone, welcome to One Dimensional Kinematics, The Adventures of Jim and Cindy. For this section, we will be learning about distance and displacement. Alright, let's look at this first example here. Which of the following are scalars and which are vectors? As we learned, scalars just have a magnitude, while vectors have a magnitude and a direction. So let's look at this first one, 5 meters. We see 5 meters, there's no direction involved here. It only shows a quantity, 5 meters. So we know this one is going to be a scalar. B says 30 meters per second east. So we see a quantity here, 30 meters per second, and east, a direction. So if it has both a quantity and a direction, then we know that this is a vector. 30, 20 degrees Celsius. This can be a little tricky because, you know, when we think of th temperature, we might think, oh, thermometers go up and down, so maybe it has a direction. But no, when you hear like 50 degrees Fahrenheit or something like that, it doesn't show you a direction or anything like that. So we know that 20 degrees Celsius temperature has no direction, therefore it is a scalar. Whoops. Scalar. Yeah. 4,000 4, calories, maybe we might be thinking, oh big, small, but again, there's no direction when it comes to calories, it is just a certain amount of quantity. So this is a scalar. This is where it becomes a little bit more confusing because we see negative 10 centimeters. So this negative makes it look a little bit confusing. What does this negative mean exactly? This negative implies actually a certain direction. It can imply going to the left, it can imply west, down, or south, but this negative implies a certain direction and therefore it's a vector. It's important to know this because this comes up a lot in physics. When you see this negative sign, many times it's gonna be saying, oh, something's going to the left, something's going west, something's going down, or something's going south. So that's important to know. Let's look at example number two. Jim travels 60 meters east to go to Cindy's house. However, Cindy is not home, so he decides to head 40 meters west to hang out with Harry. What distance did Jim travel? So it's important when we're doing this is you wanna draw out the problem. So this is Jim here, and Jim is going to Cindy's house. So Jim walks all the way to Cindy's house over here, and this was 60 meters. However, Cindy isn't home, so he decides to go to Harry's house. So he goes from here to Harry's house, all the way back here, and then goes back 40 meters. So remember, distance, Distance is how much ground an object has covered during its motion. This time, Jim is the object and he's covered 60 meters to go to Cindy's house, but then another 40 meters to go to Harry's house, which means he's covered a total distance of 100 meters. When it says, what is Jim's displacement? This is a little bit different. What we're looking for is, what is Jim's final position? What was his initial position? Which I'm doing position final and position initial. And then we know displacement is going to be equal to the final position minus the initial position. So if we call this the initial position over here, and let's just call that zero. We, we know Jim went this way, then this way, so this is Jim's final position right here. We wanna know how far it was from here to here. So that's what we wanna know. That's gonna give us the displacement, what this is right here. And if this is zero, and if we want 60 this way and 40 this way, that means that this quantity is going to be 20 meters. So we can say displacement is equal to the final position, which is equal to 20 meters, minus the initial 
position, which is zero. And this gives us a displacement of 20 meters. Example number three. So Cindy notices Jim coming to her house. She saw this happening, I guess, and decides to run out the door 150 meters to the west. Dun, dun, dun. Afterward, Cindy goes to Harry's house, which is 40 meters to the west of Cindy's house. Oh, sorry, guys. Okay. All right, example. Oops. Dun, dun, dun. So example number three, Cindy notices Jim coming to her house and decides to run out the door 150 meters to the east. Afterwards, Cindy goes to Harry's house, which is 40 minutes to the west of Cindy's house. So Jim is coming. Cindy is like, oh God, got to get out of here. So she goes to the east 150 meters. So she goes all the way to the east 150 meters. Again, it's just so important to draw out the problem when you're doing physics. So she goes 150 meters to the east, sees that Jim is no longer there. So then she decides, all right, I'm going to go all the way back. And now I'm going to go to Harry's house. And we don't really know how far this is from here, but we do know Cindy goes to Harry's house, which is 40 minutes to the west of Cindy's house. So we do know that this over here is 40 meters. With that being established, we can see what distance does Cindy travel. So remember distance is the total, um, is how much an object has covered during its motion. So it goes 150, goes all the way over here to Harry's house. So we can say 150 meters plus, we don't know what this is here, but if we look over here, we know that from here to here is 150 meters and from here to here is 40 meters. So we can say, that from here to here is 190 meters. So she goes 150 and then 190 meters. And then what we get is this is equal to 340 meters. What is Cindy's displacement? Again, displacement is the final position minus the initial position. So we want to know in this certain situation, where does she start, which is right here, and where did she end up, which is over here. So she started here at her house, and then she ended up over here. So if we're going to say that this place right here, let's just call this Uh, zero meters so if this is zero meters here and this is the initial position then the final position is over here and we can say this is the final position is to the left 40 meters from zero so if this is zero it's 40 meters to the left then we could call this final position negative 40 meters if it's like a timeline Everything on this side would be positive and everything on this side would be negative. So what we can do is the displacement is equal to the final position negative 40 minus the initial position 0 which gives us negative 40 meters. Okay, example number four, distance and displacement. Jim's mom, this is Jim, uh, tells Jim to go buy some eggs at the grocery store. On his way, so Jim's walking to the grocery store, which is 200 meters as we see. On his way, Jim sees a red penguin. So he sees this red penguin with 50 meters to the right of the grocery store. He's so excited he forgets about the eggs and runs to Cindy's house to tell her about this. 
Then Jim gets a call from his mom asking about the eggs. He rushes to the grocery store. He rushes back to the grocery store over here. Da -da -da. Before it closes, but as soon as he gets there, he passes out. So he passes out at the grocery store. What we want to know is what is Jim's displacement? What is X? What is the total distance Jim traveled? How far does Cindy live from Jim? So first of all, what is Jim's displacement? So what we got to do is this is where Jim passed out right here. Let me do it in blue. So I'm just going to kind of box. This is where Jim passed out. So this is Jim's final position. This is where he ended up. Uh, yep, so I'm just gonna put him at the grocery store right there. Passed out Jim. And where he started was at his house over here. Well, it's zero. So again, I'm gonna be putting the initial position where he started as zero. And this final position as where he ended up. And this is pretty easy. If we look at this timeline, we can see that his final position is 200 meters from where he started. So we're gonna say 200 meters. So now, when I solve this problem, once I have the final position, initial position, I could do displacement is equal to the final position minus the initial position. Final position being 200, initial position being zero. So we get 200 meters. Next question is, what is X? So we don't know how far it is from the grocery store to Cindy's house. So we don't know what X is. However, there's a, a lot of information we have here. And a lot of times physics is a puzzle like this. So for example, there's a few ways we can do this. But one thing we know is from Cindy's house to the penguin is 125 meters. And we know the penguin to the grocery store is 50 meters. So if we know this portion is 50 meters and this whole portion from here to here is 125 meters, that means this portion over here has to be 125 minus 50. And that's gonna give us 75 meters. So what is X? X is equal to 75 meters. What is the total distance Jim traveled? Okay, so now we have to do a lot of back and forth. First, he goes to the grocery store, which is 200 meters. And then he sees the red penguin, 50 meters. And then he goes to Cindy's house, which is 125 meters. And then he goes back to the grocery store, which is X, which we discovered was 75 meters. Add this all up and we get 450 meters. Last question, how far does Cindy live from Jim. So far is just the distance. So what we're trying to figure out is what is this from here to here. Drawing it out always helps. So we want to find what this is. I just called it X. So it's a little confusing. We don't know anything. However, again, we could decipher these things and try to uh, find out what it is. So we know from Jim's house to the grocery store is 200 meters. And then we know from Cindy's house to the grocery store is equal to 75 meters. So from Jim's house to Cindy's house, if this is 75 meters and this whole thing is 200 meters, this, these two have to add up to 200. So this is gonna be 200 minus 75, which gives us 125 meters. Okay, conceptual example number one. Can you drive your car in such a way that the distance it covers is greater than, equal to, or less than the magnitude of its displacement? If your answer is yes, give an example for each case. If your answer is no, explain why for each uh, case. 
So, uh, let's say if you drove in a straight line like this, then the distance you covered and your displacement, which is the final position, and then the distance from the final position to the initial position is going to be the same. So yes, you can have the distance and displacement be equal to. Can you drive your car in such a way that the distance it covers is uh, greater, sorry, greater than uh, the magnitude of its displacement? So yeah, we have equal to. Check, it can be equal. Can it be greater? And again, this is yes. If you went in a zigzag, something like this, what's gonna happen is the distance is gonna be like this, but the displacement is gonna be from where you started to where you ended up, which is gonna be shorter. So the distance can be greater than the displacement. So yes, it can be greater. Lastly, it says, can you drive your car in such a way that it is less than the magnitude of its displacement? And that is no, that is impossible because the, the only thing is it can be equal if you drive in a straight line. All right, thank you.